Hi guys, this is Sadek from Droidman.com and in this video, we will show you how to go back to the stock ROM from any custom ROM on your OnePlus phone. In other words, how you could flash the stock Oxygen OS ROM if you are currently on a custom ROM. To carry out this task, we will be using the Fastboot Enhanced tool. This, this is an open source tool which is available on GitHub. You could grab the source code from there and verify all the files. Now, there, the biggest advantage of this tool is the fact that you do not need to extract the payload file. In other words, you just need to download the firmware and supply it the payload and it will flash all the IMG file to the respective partition. There is no need to extract the payload.bin file. On the other hand, this tool was only made for OnePlus 8T. So I have, I have made a test on my OnePlus 7T and OnePlus 10 Pro and it has worked well and good on both these devices. But still there is always an element of risk involved if you try on any other device except for OnePlus 8T. There could be issues with OnePlus 8T as well. I am not negating that fact but do keep in mind that this tool was only for OnePlus 8T and you should try on any other device at your own risk. So I, for this guide I will be using a OnePlus 7T and show you how to carry out this task. So currently I am running the Lineage OS 20 ROM which is based on Android 13 and on top of this we will now be flashing it the stock Oxygen OS ROM. As for this guide I will be using the Oxygen OS firmware version 11 that is Android 11 version and I will be flashing it on top of Android 13 Lineage OS 20. So let's get started. First and foremost, you will have to download the Fastboot Enhanced tool. So the link is given in the description. Download it and extract it anywhere on your PC. In my case, I have done the extraction on the D drive. As you could see, these are all the files. So once that is done, your next course of action is to download the OnePlus stock ROM for your device. So as for my device, I am using the OnePlus 7T. And at the time of recording the video, the Android 12 firmware is not available in the stable state. So I will be using the stable Android 11 firmware to flash it on my device. So make sure to download the version of your choice from the official OnePlus site or using the Oxygen Updater app. So download the firmware and once you have downloaded it, extract it anywhere on your PC. Upon extraction, you should see the following three files. And out of these three files, we need the payload.bin file. So keep this payload.bin file on your PC. You could place it anywhere you want. For the ease of convenience, I have placed the file inside the Fastboot Enhanced tool folder itself. As you could see, you could place the payload file anywhere you want on your PC. Once that is done, you will now have to enable USB debugging as well. But before that, make sure to install Android SDK platform tools. This is the official ADB binary given by Google and is required to execute ADB and password commands. So download the tool from the link given in the description and then extract the tool anywhere on your PC. In my case, I have done the extraction in the E drive. You could extract it anywhere you want. Once that is done, let's now enable the USB debugging. So for that, go to the settings menu on your device from settings menu go to system or go back go to about phone and tap on build number seven times you will now get a message that you have now enabled developer options so go back go to system you should now see de developer options so go there and within developer option enable the toggle next to usb debugging you will now get a prompt on your phone so tap on ok let's again you will get a rsa fingerprint tap on allow once that is done let's now verify the debugging connection so go to the platform tools folder address bar, type in cmd and hit enter. This will launch the command prompt window with the platform tools folder directory. So now type in adb devices and hit enter. Make sure you are getting a serial id. If you do not get any serial id, then disable and re-enable usb debugging. Tap on revoke usb debugging authorization. Use the official usb cable and use the usb 2.0 port on your pc instead of the 3.0 port. So carry out these usb tweaks and make sure you are getting a serial id. If you are getting a serial ID, then you are good to go ahead. So next up, we will now have to install the fastboot drivers and boot our phone to fastboot mode. So first, boot, let's boot our phone to fastboot mode. For that, we need to execute the adb reboot bootloader command and hit enter. This will now boot your phone to the fastboot mode and the process will only take a few seconds. So let's wait for the time frame. It should boot to fastboot mode in a few seconds. Yes. So this is the fastboot mode on our phone. As you could see, the device state is showing unlocked. This means that the bootloader on the phone is unlocked. It should also be unlocked on your phone as well, which might already be the case since you are already on a custom ROM. So make sure that you have unlocked the bootloader beforehand itself. If that's well and good, let's now verify the fastboot connection. So type in fastboot devices and hit enter. Make sure you are again getting a serial ID. If you are not getting a serial ID, then please download the fastboot drivers and install it on your PC. The link and video for that is going in the description. You can go and check my guide and install the fastboot drivers. Once that is done, make sure you are getting a serial ID 
and also right click on the windows icon then go to device manager and make sure your phone is listed under android device as android bootloader interface so this is the this signifies that the phone is in the fast boot mode so make sure your phone is being listed here as android bootloader interface and also you are getting a serial id if that's well and good then let's move over to our next step which involves simply flashing the firmware via the fastboot enhance tool so first and foremost go to the folder where you have extracted the tool and then double click on the fastboot enhance tool it will launch the application in a few seconds once that is done make sure your phone is listed under here if that's well and good then double click on it and it will load your device once that's well and good you should now go to the partition tab and after that verify that you could verify all the details now what you need to do is simply tap on reboot to fastboot d this will boot your phone to the fastboot d mode and the process will take only a few seconds do keep in mind that i am running a lineage os rom so the fastboot d screen in my case looks something like this it might be different for your case depending on the custom rom that you are using so once you are here you will now have to click on flash payload.bin and then upload the extracted payload.bin file then click on open now before that let me show you one thing if you are using a oneplus 10 pro or a oneplus 9 series device then upon uploading the flash payload.bin file you might get a prompt that virtual av temporarily partition exists and if you get such a prompt then click on no after that go to the partition tabs and search for cow then select all the partition that have a cow in their name and click on delete these are the temporarily partition on your phone which you need to be removed it will not cause any issue on your phone so select all this partition and click on delete once that is done you could simply flash the payload.bin file in my case there is no template let, let me show you in my case which is the oneplus 70 there does not exist any partition as such let me show you what i am speaking so if you're using a oneplus 7 series device then there might not be any core partition as you could see there is no core partition in my case so i don't don't need to remove any partition but if in your case it is showing the core partition then make sure to remove and delete all the partition once that is done again go to the fastboot tab and click on flash payload.bin after that select the payload.bin file and click on open in some cases you might get this error as i let me show you once again it is signifying that the process is being used by another process so if you get such an error then just click on ok and close the tool after that relaunch fastboot enhance and you should get to device double click to open it then again click on flash payload.bin and select the payload.bin file from the extracted firmware and click open this time the flashing will start and you might again get a cow partition prompt as i have told you before if you get a prompt then please click on no go to the partition tab search for all the cow partition select them and click on delete if you don't delete it then it will cause a few issues so delete all these temp partitions from your phone and only after that click on flash payload.bin and as told you before please make sure that you are flashing the firmware in the fastboot d mode do not flash the firmware in the fastboot mode ever when it comes to using this tool so as of now we are in the fastboot d mode and the flashing has now started now as far as the time is concerned this process takes up to 10 minutes so we'll wait for the time frame in the meantime let me discuss something important if for some reason you do not want to use this for this tool then it's well and good you can also opt for the msm download tool the benefit with msm tool is the fact that it comes specifically for your device so you could download it just for your phone and then install it using the OFP, OFP firmware however some users do not prefer to use the msm tool just for the single reason because it requires a few complicated steps for example you, you will have to install the qualcomm edl mode drivers first and foremost so that your phone is listed as the qualcomm access usb util drivers apart from that you will also have to boot your phone to edl mode yes when it's come to msm tool you have to use the edl mode instead of the fastboot or fastboot d mode or uh, and once that is done another major issue with that has some have reported that they usually get a sahara communication field issue while using the msm tool so while msm tool does come for your device specifically however there are a few issues as i have mentioned you so for that case you could use the fastboot enhanced tool regarding this let's now verify the status on your phone you will not get any status so keep your phone booted to fastboot d mode itself leave it as it is you could keep a track using the progress bar on the tool 
so regarding this as i already told you before this tool was made by xga senior member and it is only made for oneplus 80 and even though i have tried it on my oneplus 70 and oneplus 10 pro but it could prove to be a risky bet so if you are having any risk then please opt for the msm tool itself because msm tool is specifically made for your device and it comes with the osp firmware for your device itself regarding how you could use the msm tool i've already made a guide and linked the tools for all the msm tool from this post you could go to this link and download the desired msm tool for your phone do keep in mind that the msm tools are also not usually updated for example uh, when it comes to one plus 70 the last msm tool is android 11 that is not an issue you could also flash the msm tool using one plus on your android 11 firmware as well that is not a cause of concern apart from that the msm tool does not require any unlock booter yes you could flash it on a lock booter as well so msm tool is usually the go-to choice when it comes to flashing the stock rom but if in your case you cannot go to edl mode or are getting some errors in the msm tool then in that case you could use the fastboot enhanced tool for example these are some of the errors that i have usually come across sara communication failed stuck in param preload smt config and tool is unable to recognize the device so these are usually some of the issues that you might come across and you should be able to fix this issue using my guys even in the description however if you are still having any issues then you could always opt for the fastboot enhanced tool so regarding this let's now re-verify the process yes the flashing usually takes time some time so we should wait for the time frame and please do not move your device while the flashing is going on it might cause a few issues so let's now wait for the flashing to complete the major time it takes is to flash the super.img which holds your system img file so that flashing would take, it take some time and as already mentioned before i am flashing the android 11 firmware so i was using the lineage os 20 rom based on android 13 and currently i am flashing the android 11 stock firmware so this signifies as a downgrade so you could downgrade and flash an older version firmware on your phone using this tool but when it's when it comes to downgrading from stock android 12 to stock android 11 i haven't used it in that manner so i would avoid using that manner for that case you should use the official oneplus files that they release for the downgrade process but if you are currently on a custom rom you, it's obvious you will not be able to use that official oneplus rollback firmware and in that case you could use the msm tool or the fastboot enhanced tool so let's re-verify the progress so it's going on so guys i will now fast forward the video to the end of this process so let's wait for the time frame i'll you could either skip or i'll fast forward it to the end so let's wait hi guys so the flashing has now been completed and upon the completion you will be notified of the same so just click on ok and once that is done you just need to tap on reboot system now and your device will should not boot to the stock oxygen os depending on the android version that you have flashed it will boot to that os version in my case i have flashed the android 11 firmware so my device should boot to the stock oxygen os 11 so let's wait for the time frame so let's see how it goes so in some instances as you could see your device might boot to the stock recovery if in if that happens then simply select the language of your choice in our case let's select english after that go to wipe data and cache and tap on erase everything again tap on this can't be undone continue and this will factory reset our phone and remove all the encryptions once that is done you should get a format success message so tap on done then go back then go back and select english go to advanced and now you could select boot to fastboot mode and tap on reboot to fastboot so our phone will now boot to the fastboot mode and from there you could now click on the make sure you it's showing start at the top left if that's well and good then just click on the power button and your device should now boot to the os so let's wait for the time frame while that's happening you could also boot to the os using the fastboot reboot command but i have shown you using the hardware key combination that's not a cause of concern you could use any way you want and also keep in mind that the first boot might take a few extra seconds to load and right after you have flashed the firmware using the fastboot enhanced tool your device will boot to the 
stock recovery mode that's not an issue but that should happen and if your device gets rebooted to the stock recovery simply you have to format the data on your phone it will remove all the data but that was along the affected lines i have already told you before that your device will go a uh, reboot and it will also have to go a reset so if your device reboots to stock recovery simply select the language and format data on your device once that is done boot to the device to the fast boot mode and from fast boot mode you can boot to the os so as you could see we are now on the oxygen os animation since this is the first time we are booting our phone it will take a few additional seconds to boot in some cases it might take up to around 5 minutes as well so please don't worry for the time frame and let the device boot from the second time onward it will not take so long since it is the first time we have flashed the stock firmware the process is taking longer and as of now as i told you before i am be flashing the android 11 firmware and my bootloader is also unlocked so i could now easily install the android 12 firmware using just the ota update yes you could install the ota update even if your phone bootloader is unlocked in my case the bootloader is unlocked and i'm currently on an android 11 firmware but i could go to the settings menu and from the system menu i could download and install the android 12 firmware as well now why would i like to install the android 12 firmware well this is because all the custom roms that are based on android 13 requires you to be on android 12 as well so if you are on android 11 you will not be able to flash any custom rom which is based on android 13 so that is why i will also be installing the android 12 firmware using the official ota method you or if you do not want the official ota method you will also flash it using the password enhance tool or you could flash it manually using the password commands as well but for this guide i, I simply flash it using the ota method and you will get the update once you connect to your wi-fi so as you could see the booting is now complete and our device should now boot to the os so as of now i'll be skipping the setup i will show you how to the boot screen so let's agree to it and skip mobile network setup offline continue i will currently skipping all the information so as to boot your phone to the system and show you the complete setup process so let's skip the co-creation agree and continue agree then skip the screen log as well as of now select the font then navigation gesture and so i guess this is compulsory let me quickly follow this process and okay well and good so we are done with this let's now move ahead and start so as you could see my phone is now on the stock oxygen os android 11 firmware let's re-verify the same if i go to the settings menu you could see about phone it's currently on android 11 version 11 and i could now if i log into my wi-fi account as well then i could easily install the update from here system updates file i could easily download and install from here as of now i will not be doing that so guys anyways on that note we round off this video on how you could flash the oxygen os firmware and go back from any custom rom to any stock rom which is based for your oneplus phone if you have any queries regarding this instruction please let us know in the comment section thanks a lot for watching guys and do subscribe to this channel for more tips and tricks thank you all